this is the moment you all been looking forward to because we told you that we've got a big, big, big talent in the building. Yeah, is a successful and super talented Nigerian songwriter, musician, and producer whose name has been mentioned on many artists' song credits as producer and writer. Basically, quite a number of scrap that. <laughs> <laughs> Many Nigerian <laughs> artists have him to thank for some of their biggest hits. His personal hits include Ordinary People, Star of Wonder, Boost It featuring Fowls, One Hit, and most recently, We Plenty featuring Simi, which we just can't get enough of here on the show. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Kobams Asuko is here with us! <laughs> I need to take you. I around. made it. You need to start doing my intro. Let's yes! Go. yes! I have another job. Like, what was that? <laughs> that is you. <laughs> oh wow! Thank Welcome. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. We really appreciate this. I mean, Thank I, you I for said, like, you. I'm starstruck at the moment. Me too. I don't know if I can actually do this. Mommy, I made it. Oh, so pretty. Thank, Thank you, guys. Are you good now? Yeah. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my oh, gosh. Wow. Okay, so, Ooh. wow. We have read a lot of things about you, heard your interviews and all of that. Sometimes I'm just curious to even know some stuff about you. And well, we'll be talking about you, we'll be talking about the music industry and well, things outside your music too. Okay. So I think we should even start with this one. Hmm. Hmm. So you say these days, people just complain, Nigerians, we don't know what they want to. Hmm. They will say that there are no good music, that people are not doing music the hmm. way it, it used be to done. be back then. Hmm. That all these songs, can they even last? Can they stay, um, well, stand, the test, stand the test of time and all of those? Hmm. I wonder what you think about this. Do you think that there are no good music around any longer? I think the good music is relative, quite honestly. And I feel like, you know, mu um, the music we make is a reflection of our people. Um, obviously, if we're not um, enjoying the music and buying the music and all of that, then, you know, musicians wouldn't be making it with it the way they're making it. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is to say that the gatekeepers actually use the theory of adaptation to get people to love what it is they want people to love. So the yeah. gatekeepers being radio stations, um, online media, TV, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it, it, it cuts both ways. Um, I feel like it's a, mix, it's a mixture of both. So there's the Alter movement, which is happening, mm -hmm. and that's really exciting. You know, the Thames and the Santis and the Odunsis. Yeah. You know, there's all of this, you know, vibe that's going on here. You you know, which is for, I mean, for those who love it. And, you know, there's also people who are like creating organic sound and hoping that one day it will blow like everybody else. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a good mix. I just feel like, you know, we need to um, be a bit more inclusive and just have variety. Mm. Um, yeah, I feel like because of a general bandwagon effect, we don't have as much, we don't have room for, we don't tolerate variety and gatekeepers don't encourage as much variety. So I think that's just all we need. Everybody can coexist. Mm. 200 million Nigerians cannot be wrong for loving Lamba or Zanku. Or <laughs> Zanku. So, I, I'm very happy that you mentioned this, um, talking mm -hmm. about good music. And I also read in an interview where we were talking about talent and how talent is not enough, how we need a better legal and HR system. Absolutely. You know, in this Absolutely. day and age where we have so many talented singers, but it seems like the structure is still lacking. How do mm -hmm. people still go? How do people, how should people go about, about it? it? I think that's the question. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of work to do. I think, first of all, we need to get um, the important players to get involved. Um, it's, it's taking a lot of time for some people to see um, music as you know, a viable contributor to our, our economy. That's slowly beginning to happen. Um, the people in certain places that matter, and I'm not going to mention names, um, uh, you know, they, it, it takes a little while for them to catch on sometimes. Uh, and I hope that they catch on in good time, you know, to be able to take advantage of what music is doing. It's literally putting us, you know, in the fore, you know, taking, you know, our, our culture, our, our, our personality as a nation, you know, to center stage. So we, it, once the right people get involved, you know, we need people in the financial sector to get to believe enough to put their money behind it. Yeah. Because there's a lot of, you know, 
all kinds of money is getting into music. And as long as that's happening, you know, that's also going to affect the way things are structured. Mm -hmm. But when people who are like in the financial sector, in different other sectors that are already functioning and already have structure, bring the existing structures into and internal processes into music, it's going to change things a lot. And I think that that's gradually, gra slowly beginning to happen. You know, the interest is picking. It's just um, not fast enough, mm -hmm. but yeah, but it, it's happening, mm -hmm. it's happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, I mean, I read up about you and there was just so much. Indeed. Yes. I mean, you produced um, um, Asha's major album, the album that really brought her to limelight. Like major. Asha. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I wasn't, the I wasn't there when you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying this girl said this thing on her own. Album. Let's, say, let's say you said it on your own. You know, and you worked with so many other people. Oh, and yeah. then there's a song where you're like, you want to blow like Olami Day. Oh, a yeah. lot of people are like, what is Kobam's doing right now? Like, some people feel like, no, he's been his Kobam, because he shouldn't be saying he wants to blow like Olamide. When mm -hmm. he's made people, he's worked with people like Omar Ome, he's maybe worked mm -hmm. with people like Asha. How did you, I mean, how do you feel about that? And what's, what's the, um, the inspiration behind that song? So let's establish a few things real quick. First of all, I haven't blown like Olamide yet. So. <laughs> So, Olamide has blown. I'm looking for his kind of blue. So, and Olamide really has blown. And secondly, and most importantly, um, One Hit um, is a song that reflects the wishes and the aspirations of the average Nigerian artist mm -hmm. who's struggling to make it. It may not always be me. I was there at some point in time in my life. And, you know, on, on some level, I'm probably still there. There's certain things, you know, that I, I, I wish for. I mean, you look at some of the biggest artists from Whiskey to Davido. I mean, you know, as big and as successful as these guys are, and I, I love them so much, you know, they're not Drake. You know what I mean? And that's not to say they don't have talent and they don't have all of that. But, you know, there's just, there's, there's always room to do better, always room to be better, mm -hmm. you know. And so for me, you know, that's what I want for myself. But more importantly, that's what I want for the average Nigerian artist who's out there. And not just the artist, you know, people who are doing general contracts, you know, handing out cards, just mm -hmm. there hustling, working hard. Mm -hmm. You know, the average Nigerian who just hopes that one day from their hard work, they can do more than just have barely enough mm -hmm. you know what i mean and for me that's what that's let's have you know conversations that actually affect you know where we are in life and things that can yeah. cause us to aspire so i think it's bigger than you know me wanting to blow more than olamide or blow like olamide or whatever yeah. Yeah. it's it's, it's a, a message, message. Mm -hmm. yeah it's a, it's a stronger message than that all right thank all right. you so much for the clarification so now you've heard it. but first before we continue with our interview with Kobams, we'll go on a break and we'll be right back with more questions for Kobams. Song right there by Kobams and Simi. It's called We Plenty. And of course, we still have Kobams in the studio. Yes. Now, it's very interesting whenever I hear your music because I know that at some points you didn't like your voice. Are you have you fallen in love with your voice now? Not not completely. Not no. completely. Yeah, I was I was listening to you just now. And I was like, ah, Simi, she sounds so great. I'm like, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have such an amazing voice. Is that, is that why you do more of, um, or maybe you don't do more, but you're also a songwriter. Is that part of the reasons why? Um, so I, th I think songwriting for me is a gift. You know, you write songs because songs come to you. Certain things inspire you to write songs. Um, production would be more a reason why. Um, so I, I didn't like my voice, but I could like just sort of break music into like it's, you know, very the, like the minute, minute varying components in my head. And so I began to produce other people and I started to use other people's voice to practice what I thought I could make my voice sound like, you know, mm. and stuff, yeah. It's interesting. Okay, so <laughs> I have um, this question that we've always talked about uh, on this show, and uh, we've, we haven't actually gotten to the end of it because we have not gotten an actual answer to it every time. I'm sure you have um, heard about artists falling out with record labels oh, and then wow. these things getting on social media. The way you media. prefaced it, I knew there was going to be trouble. But go on. <laughs> Go on, go on. And here. then, you know, getting on social media and then it becomes very messy. People are blaming the artists. Some people are saying they're not grateful. And some people are saying that, see, record label, they take advantage they're of these people yeah, and all of those. So I wonder what your take is on this particular one. Okay, so first of all, as far as, you know, going, getting, getting on social media is concerned, I feel like a lot of feelings are involved. Um, mm. A lot of feelings are involved um, because, quite honestly, um, everyone has a story and everyone's going to tell the story from the perspective of the victim. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, no one might exactly be wrong as no one might exactly be right because, it, you know, the label feels like, well, we've invested, we've put in money, we've done this, you know, but the artist also feels like, well, you ripped me off, you did this, you did that. And half the time, you know, what is the comparison? What are you measuring, you know, what the label has done for you against, you know, um, um, do, do you have 
have you know another contract somewhere else that you're comparing it to and is it professional is it standard and you know even you as a label you know half the time you know you start and you know do you sort of you have the funding to to go through with it because i've i've been down that road myself and i know firsthand what it can be like you know running a label is an expensive venture it's not a hobby it's a serious business and mm -hmm. if you're not it's some it's the sort of thing that if you're not ready for it you don't go into it and a lot of people went into it because of just you know blind passion mm -hmm. and then in the midst in the midst of it all, you find out that, you know, they're, they're all of, obviously all these issues. So, I mean, it depends. You, you think of it on a case by case basis. Mm. Um, in some cases, it might be the issue, you know, with the labor. In some cases, it might be the issue with the artist. artist. In some cases, it might not even be an issue with either of both parties. It might just be, you know, um, capability, you know, or, or being professional or, you know, so you, you really can't, um, it, it's not a one size fits all situation. Yeah, that's, that's what, really what I think. Ow. So I, I know that there is this. Answer I've heard yes, this I, I hope it wasn't political. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that there is this advocacy uh, that you're pushing, and that is her story, our story. Oh yes. And you want to talk about that? Yes. So um, I feel like the you know so we 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 evil thrives you know in a culture of silence, and I feel like there's a lot that um, our culture sort of. Um, has deemed permissible because, you know, we don't talk about it. Um, and, you know, one of such is the issue of, you know, gender and uh, sexual and gender-based violence. And so for me, I feel like it's something, you know, no one has to suffer. And no matter how we want to look at it, you know, women have um, been on the receiving end and on the, I mean, we've both, you know, both genders have been on the receiving end, but women have sort of gotten the shorter end yeah, of, the, of the stick. That's and some true. people say, well, you should sort of even it out, you know, and, you know, like black, the whole Black Lives Matter. But sometimes you, you call a thing what you call it to bring attention to who suffers more, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I feel like that's something we ought to address. I feel like, you know, we need to change the way we treat our women. I feel like we need to change the way we treat our children. I feel like we need to change the way we handle matters that are related to, you know, sexual and gender based violence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I strongly advocate for a, a better conversation, a louder conversation, you know, about these sorts of things. And let's step away from the culture of silence and actually speak up and speak Great. out because people are suffering. Mm -hmm. Woo. Okay. All right, so, I mean, time flies when we're having fun and we want to keep you here for longer, but then we need one thing from you. You're going to sing. Oh my gosh. Yes. You're going to sing. Uh, I heard your voice just now. We you and I heard your yes. voice, Arika. I heard your voice. <laughs> you're going to sing with me. Uh, and okay. you're going to tell me what song we're singing. Me? Yeah. No. Okay, let's sing Ordinary People. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm, take mm. me. Yeah, ready, Abby? I'm a backup singer. So let us have a world of ordinary people living life the way God wants us to. Sing it, girl. <laughs> if we have a world of ordinary people, extraordinary things will happen to me and you. I saw it, Papa. Thank you so much. Mommy, are you watching? Wow. Before you go, one last question. Three new guys on the block, three new kids on the block. We all have been talking about them. Rema, Joe Boy, Fire Boy. Do you like, which of them do you like? I like Rema. Eh? But I like Fire Boy. Mm. And I like Joe Boy. Mm. But I like Fire Boy. You like Fire Boy? <laughs> See, Fireboy right now is, Fireboy is, oh my goodness, Fireboy is the truth. Fireboy is the, I, li I, like, I like them all, I think they're all great artists, but Fireboy is special to me. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 he has a body of work that I feel like he made the effort to make every song a potential hit song. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a good songwriter, he's a true artist, he's a great singer, he's a Consummate musician, I think. I, I like I like I like them all, but Fireboy is special to me. In my Ooh. own opinion, in my own personal like. Ooh. You can like what you like, but I like Fireboy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome. It's so much fun. I'm I don't glad want you I to have go. fun. And you guys should start a band. Yeah! Thank you so 